Hello everyone, I'm Yun Ting Zheng, I'm a postdoc from Caltech, and today I will share with you about our recent work on data-driven cosmology from three-dimensional light cones. And this work is in collaboration with Ben Wondell from IAP and CCA, Cixin Zhang Olivier Dore from JPL and Caltech. So we know one of the main problems of cosmology is to study the natural structures of our universe. And over the past couple of decades, people have been doing this large-scale galaxy registry survey uh, like the SCSS to make this very beautiful map of our natural structures traced by all these galaxies. And we can study the clustering of these galaxies to infer the underlying cosmological model. So with this galaxy registry surveys, what we are doing is that we take the raw data coming from the telescope that is an intensity map in multiple frequencies and we'll extract the bright source from the image and extract the spectra and then we can fit the redshift either with the spectral Z or the photo Z. And then we can get the three-dimensional distribution of all these galaxies to trace the underlying lustral structures. However, in this process, uh, we need some prior knowledge like building an SCD library to fit the redshift. And also the raw data we get coming from the telescope is this intensity map in a few different frequency bands. And this emission is coming from all the sources on the sky. But here we only use the information from these bright sources. And the information from these spectral populations are, are totally wasted in this analysis. So this sounds like not a very optimal way to use all the information we have in the data. And especially in the coming years, we'll have data from this next generation cosmological survey they will give us a very nice large scale um, images of the sky um, in many different frequencies. So we should really start thinking about uh, with these multi-frequency intensity maps, how can we optimally extract the cosmological information beyond doing the traditional uh, galaxy register survey that detect the individual sources? And that's the motivation of our work. So here we develop a new algorithm to do a data-driven uh, analysis to study cosmology and directly using the multi-frequency images and use all the photons we have in these three-dimensional light cones. And in our analysis, we don't need any prior knowledge like building an SED library and we can infer all the signal information directly from the data. So it's a totally uh, data-driven way to study um, uh, this kind of data set. And also because we have directly analyzed these intensity maps. So we are not wasting any photons coming from the phantom sources like the galaxy detection. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. Okay, so let's first think about how can we describe the signal we see in the data. So here, um, our observing data is this intensity map in multiple frequencies. And the signal in the map is coming from all the sources uh, within the light cone of our observation across all the regions. Okay. And now let's suppose we can describe uh, these sources in terms of a few different classes. So for example, here I have red, blue, and green class. And all these galaxies are tracing the same underlying um, density field. And let's suppose that within each classes, all the sources have the same SED and their redshift distribution is de described by some luminosity density as a function of redshift. Okay. Okay, so for example, in this case, I have um, some uh, uh, red galaxies is the first class and maybe the star forming galaxies is the second class and the third class might be some uh, kind of quasars. Okay, and this concept of this class can be more abstract. So for example, I can do an, um, a principal component analysis of all the galaxy SED in our universe to find out uh, a few principal modes to better describe this emission field. Okay. okay, so now with this picture, let's see how can we write down the observed intensity field. So here our data is an intensity I as a function of angular position on the sky and the observed wavelengths. And this signal is an integration of all the sources across redshift 
and we send over the signal from all the classes of source. So for each class, we can describe it in terms of um, their SED and their luminosity density. And all these signal are tracing the underlying metric density field, delta M. Okay, so now with this signal, we can also look at it in the uh, Fourier space. So in the Fourier space, um, this metric density field can be described by the power spectrum P of K. And we can also further transform our data on uh, I um, with the spherical harmonics. So here we have some uh, corresponding uh, SED and the luminosity density, and the signal uh, will be a bias tracers of the underlying density field delta. And here we'll consider that we only do this analysis on large scales. So this bias is, um, um, is a scale independent bias. And so it's just a constant that will totally degenerate with the um, um, the, the luminosity density M. Okay, so now with this uh, further transform, then we can look at the covariance of our data set in this Fourier space, that is the angular power spectrum CL. And we can take um, this uh, power spectrum with different uh, frequency bands, so we get this cross power spectrum CL lambda lambda plum. And this uh, signal um, is something uh, can be de described by our signal field as the SED luminosity density and the power spectrum P. And also in a real observation, we'll have some noise coming from the instrument or from the foregrounds. So we also have this noise term in the power spectrum. Okay, and here I want to emphasize that looking at this uh, cross power spectrum C or lambda lambda plum. This is a lossless representation of our data on the large scales. Because on large scales, we know the cosmological signal uh, is very homogeneous and isotropic, and it can be described by the Gaussian fluctuations. So the C or lambda lambda plum will capture all the information we have uh, in the data. Okay, so now with this. Uh, expression, what we are going to do with the real data is this. So remember, uh, we are considering uh, the data we have is this intensity map um, and in a few different frequency slices. And then after we take this data, we'll take the cross power spectrum between all these different frequencies to get this CL lambda lambda plum. And then with this CL lambda lambda plum, we'll apply this to our algorithm to infer the underlying uh, signal, so the SED and the luminosity density of the source and the underlying uh, power spectrum of the uh, metric density field and also the noise in the data. And technically speaking, we are not solving the exact solution of this uh, signal and the power spectrum because if you look at this equation, the overall scaling of the signal and the power spectrum term is totally degenerate. So we cannot get the absolute uh, value of this uh, signal, but we can still solve for the relative, um, uh, the relative uh, shape of the of, of this signal and a power spectrum term. Okay, so what we are going to do is that we take uh, this CL lambda lambda plum from observation, and then we we'll, we build this algorithm to do an inference that we can simultaneously solve the astrophysical information, that is the SED and luminosity density of the sources from, from different classes, and also the cosmological information, that is the large structural power spectrum, and also some nuisance parameters like the noise in the data. Okay, and we'll infer all this information directly from the data covariance, that is our CL and lambda plum. And here we don't need to make any assumption, any prior knowledge, like building an SED library, we can infer all this information directly from data. So this is a totally data-driven way to study uh, cosmology. Okay. And, and we can blindly infer all this information directly from our data covariance. So this is uh, a very different way to study cosmology compared to the com um, conventional uh, galaxy register surveys that you have to 
tag your image and you had to first um, detect bright sources in an image and do the photo Z or the spectral Z from these sources and map the larger structures from only these bright sources you can resolve. But here we are using information um, from everything by directly looking at these intensity maps. Okay, so let's see how it works on, um, on, on, on data. Okay, so here we'll first test our algorithm um, a simulated uh, setup. So here we'll assume in this case, we considered um, an, a, sing, uh, a single class of source. That means that all the sources in our universe have the same kind of SED, and we made up this very generic um, SED shape. And this SED have some typical uh, feature of the galaxy SED, like the 4,000 Amstrom break and the 1.6 micron bumps. And also we designed that it has some kind of luminosity density as a function of redshift, and it follows the underlying uh, linear metropole spectrum. And then we'll suppose uh, with this signal field, we'll do our observation by combining uh, the LSST and the Euclid, which have um, six uh, optical bands coming from LSST and three uh, name thread bands from Euclid. And we'll combine uh, this to observation. So here we have a nine band uh, photometric uh, imaging of this uh, signal field. And we consider the signal is coming from redshift uh, about zero to three. So at redshift zero, we'll probe the SED uh, at these longer wavelength parts. And at the higher redshift, we'll probe the SED at the UV to optical parts. Okay, so now with this setting with some simulated signal and some mock observation, and then we can model what's the uh, data covariance C or lambda lambda plum we'll get from this kind of observation. And then we'll fit this CL and lana plums into our uh, algorithm to try to extract the input signal that is the SED, the luminosity density, and the pulse spectrum. Okay, so let's see how it works. Okay, so here's the results uh, in this very uh, simple example case. So here, the dash line here, um, is our input SED, luminosity density, and the pulse spectrum. And the blue shaded region is our one sigma constraint coming from our algorithm. Okay. So in this example, you can see we can get a pretty good constraint, um, the input SED and luminosity density. And the relative um, error of this reconstruction is that within uh, 5%. And for the pulse spectrum, we can also uh, recover the true value with about 20% uncertainties, depending on the scales. Okay. And of course, the more uh, interesting case to look at is to apply this with a multiple uh, source class on the sky. So here is another uh, example case we did. So here we have uh, two class of sources. And these two classes have different SED and they have different luminosity density, but they trace the same underlying pulse spectrum. And in this case, uh, we found that we can also successfully reconstruct the input uh, signal from a source and our uh, underlying larger structures. But the constraint from uh, for, the, for the source, like the SED and the luminosity density, is not as good as uh, the case of one class, because now you have some uh, very strong correlation between the, the signal from these two classes, but they join the constraint in the underlying uh, density field. Okay, so here are just some preliminary results uh, we get uh, for now, and we, and and we're still uh, we're still working on uh, looking at some more um, uh, realistic cases in the future. Okay, so here's my short summaries. So here we develop a new uh, data-driven algorithm to analyze the large-scale multi-frequency intensity maps, and um, and in our algorithm. We can simultaneously uh, solve for the input signal, the underlying larger structures, and also the noise in the data directly from the data covariance, that is the CL, data data from all the cross pulse spectrum uh, we have from, from observations. And in our analysis, 
um, we use a totally data-driven way, so we don't need to make any assumptions, like having some SED library and extracting on the bright source in a map. Okay, so this will be um, a very uh, powerful tool to apply to the future uh, cosmological survey. Okay, and we are now wrapping up on uh, our first uh, kind of proof concept paper. So please stay tuned. Thank you.